Okay, I'd like to introduce myself. So um, uh, I'm D uh, Douglas Crystal. I've worked on various sort of startups um, uh, out of Australia. Brought them over here to uh, over here to the states. And my partner, who's in the audience today, is uh, Dan Doherty, and um, uh, he worked with uh, NPS and, and sort of eCredit. So what are we doing? So not another contact app. So when we look at uh, contact apps and we look at you know, the communication of giving my details to, you know, to somebody else. When we looked at that, 98% you know, of you know, business cards that are handed out never make it into somebody else's contacts. Uh, and that's fundamentally broken. Now, there's been you know, many companies who, who've tried to sort of, you know, sort of fix that, come up with solutions to sort of solve that, all taking a different sort of spin. So the first question we usually get asked is, well, V-card, you know, on a particular phone, you can share your V-card, isn't that the way to actually sort of do this? We, we thought so, before we developed this application, we looked at V-card, and very quickly we found sharing a V-card from an iPhone to an Android, the Android can't read it. Sharing from an iPhone to Google Contacts, you've got to export it before you can then import it. So that was a very clumsy sort of process. Then we looked at card scanning apps. Um, lots of those have been downloaded. When we polled and talked to a lot of people, a lot of people download them, but they never actually then go about actually using them. They use for the first week, and then your business card still lying on your desk. Next was you know, uh, contact management and software apps. Basically, they're going to do a better job of handling your contacts for you. Forget what built natively in the phone. Now, when we looked at that, most people we talked to said, you know, they found it a challenge giving up all their contacts, not using their native um, uh, contacts, but using a third party application. And they found the limitations of that was, was quite a challenge. And then finally, there was a sort of card swapping apps. Uh, probably the most famous one was, uh, was Bump, which was uh, you know, discontinued uh, a couple of years ago. So, so what did we do? So we, we developed a, a mobile application, um, and the, the, the first kind of secret, or the first thing we, we tried to solve was with really with the, uh, the dynamic format for the, for the, uh, the V-card. So what happens is, when you send a, a V-card from your phone to somebody else, it detects that the, the device that's opening that V-card, and then adjusts the format to suit that device. So iPhone to Android, it will convert it to the Android uh, standard, and so it can be read. Going to Google Contacts on a desktop, uh, going to Outlook on the desktop, it converts it to suit that device. Next was, you know, and, and I'm a big proponent of this, is developing any application relying on both people having the application um, is usually you know, a big, big downside. So you know, we developed in the application the way to be able to send somebody your, your card without them having to have the application. You also know when that person downloaded your card. Now, we also built in that if two people swap their details and they both have the application, and I'll give a quick demo in, in, in just a moment, is it will actually update your native contacts. And also, while you maintain that connection, whenever somebody updates their details, your contacts will get updated. So say you know, a gentleman there was you know, changing his job role or changed his email address, it would actually notify uh, my device and update my native contacts. So your contacts always stay up to date. The, application, uh, the mobile application has been out for, um, you know, for about three months. Uh, we're seeing um, a, a take-up rate of about 90%. So that's 90% of the cards that are sent out are actually downloaded. Now, uh, just, what, just while I'm sort of setting up uh, on the mobile device, uh, one of the other features we've got is a text back service. So, if anybody texts Douglas to this number now, you will actually get my, actually get my contact details. Quick shift, 30 seconds, can we do it in 30 seconds? Oh, we, we're, we're up. Okay, so, so the, the first thing I want to sort of show you is, is, re, is really the double connect. Very, quite, very similar to um, uh, very similar to Bum. I basically shake my phone. Oh, somebody just sent me a card. I'll ignore that for the moment. I shake my phone and I can see the, the people who are nearby in this room, and I can basically have a look and say, okay, there's Dan Doherty. I can send his request. He gets my details. If he accepts it, 
and returns a card, then I basically get his card back and it's updated and it goes straight into my native contacts. Then the, uh, the other sort of process after this, okay, we've got that. So we there, we there have, have Dan's card. I can basically click save, update because I already have his details, and done. Now, if Dan was to basically change his details, basically change his um, you know, job title, you know, you know, you know, email address, as I mentioned before, um, um, what you should see sort of popping up is basically a message saying Dan has changed his details, and then you basically get a message, and you can again save that to, you, to your contacts. So, so there we have. So Dan basically just changed changed his details. So what have changed? Okay, he's he's giving himself a very weird job title. So that's um, that's connect up. Any questions? He's in the back. Yeah, so, so the question is, are we getting location information from, uh, from other people? And the, the answer is uh, yes. So basically, when you shake the phone, the, uh, the phone determines who's close by uh, and who's shaken in, you know, in, in the last, and it's usually configurable, but basically who's shaken in, in the last minute, and then those two people can actually you know, exchange information. So what distance is that? Well, we can actually go worldwide. <laughs> Uh, but we, you know, it's actually sort of programmed to work within a thousand meters. So without location services, uh, we, we basically work within within about a hundred meters. And you know what we decided, we looked at Bluetooth and and um, and then at NFC, and too many people still have those services turned off. And so that's why we, we basically use sort of you know sort of Wi-Fi uh, and basically use the you know the, the cellular service you know to give us location information. That's also why we also chose Progress and um, uh, use their, their, their geospatial tools as opposed to uh, using MySQL or you know, Mongo, and that might have been a, another good option. One of, one of the other items um, you know, with regards to that is uh, a feature that's coming out in the release next week is the ability is if you're in this room here, you'd be able to shake your phone and actually chat to other people who are in this room, even before you decide to uh, to actually connect with them. Yes, go ahead. No. Um, what we what we can what we can pick up is when you shake the phone, your phone announces to our server saying, "Hey, I'm in this location," and at the same time, it says, "Has anybody else uh, shaken their phone in the last minute? Who is in a, in that location as well?" It shows you each other's details, um, and then then you can connect. It's kind of like an shape. It's kind of an yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so the, the question is, uh, will this replace um, your, your, your contact manager or your Google co your contacts? The answer is kind of a bit of a yes and no there. So as far as you know, initially sort of swapping information and putting information in, this becomes a way of capturing somebody's details, uh, but it will actually write to your Google contacts. So whatever your native contact app is, you know, we don't want to replace that. Because you know you, there's too many other services built around you know um, you know other contact apps like your native iPhone contacts, Google contacts on the Android. So we will write to that and we will keep that up to date. Can you go over again how you share a contact with someone who doesn't have the app? Do you need to have their phone number or email address on your phone, or is there a way to? Yeah, great question. So, uh, you know, one of the features that we just uh, sort of skipped over was, and the, the question is, you know, how do you connect with somebody who doesn't have the application? And so we, we call this kind of a, a one-way connect. And basically, what uh, what you do is, you know, if if we were to sort of meet, I would ask, um, I'd ask for your name and either your phone number or your email, and then click, basically click send. You would get uh, a text message or an email with my contact details, and then as soon as you download that to your phone, then it records that, to, it tells me that you basically downloaded it. The details that I sent to you, um, and details I wrote down, 
and then written to my native contacts um, and stored in my contacts if I, if I want, want that to happen. Yeah, question? Like you don't link it, just your Yeah, so, so the question is about this sort of an integration with, with sort of LinkedIn. And so the, the answer is yes, we, um, we, we integrate with LinkedIn. Um, and, and the whole idea is, is not to replace LinkedIn, but again, to, to utilize the information coming from LinkedIn. LinkedIn to update your profile in here. And then, so basically, if you update in LinkedIn, it updates our app, and then that can actually update your, your, your contacts. Thanks. Right, thank you very much.